Hey everyone, thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Julian, I'm the Heart Success Manager here at BuildExact. I really appreciate you all uh, joining on the webinar, um, especially on a Friday. Um, so we should have Kurt there on the other side there. Just Kurt, if you can just turn your camera on now, that'd be awesome, so I can introduce you. Hey mate, everyone's favorite uh, South African there on the phone. <laughs> Hi Julian, thanks for having me, man. <laughs> No worries at all. So guys, we've done um, a couple of webinars with uh, with Kurt in the past. So if you do actually want to check out any previous work before I forget to, to mention it, um, check out our, our YouTube channel. Um, so I build exact on YouTube and then there's some webinars there. They're normally the, the slightly longer ones. Um, when we have Kurt on, we always tend to get about 25 minutes, half an hour worth of questions. So uh, if you find the longest videos, they're normally the ones that, that Kurt will be on. Um, lovely just to introduce uh, Kurt. We've worked him for a little while now. Um, founder of Builders Coach, um, worked with hundreds of builders uh, since 2004, I think. Is that right, Kurt? Correct, yes. Yeah, so uh, yeah, worked with hundreds of builders throughout the years, helping them, and it's been great having him on board to share all his knowledge and his insights with uh, with our customers and you know people in our network that we may have uh, spoken to even you know a few years ago that, that tend to join these webinars. Um, so great to, great to have you all on. Um, just some housekeeping stuff. Um, throughout the webinar, feel free to ask questions. There will, we'll, we'll try and throw to a few questions during the presentation, um, where they're appropriate to what Kurt's uh, covering off, but we'll save a big session at the end for questions. But what I would say is get your questions in there while you can, because we often find if people don't get their questions in, they can forget them sometimes. So um, get them in and we'll, we'll cover them off um, throughout the webinar. Um, and if for whatever reason you can't, um, you can't, stay to the end there will be a recording of this so don't worry um you will see a chat session section at the bottom um the one thing i would say is when you're actually going and uh writing your questions just make sure you check there's a little host and panelist bu uh, button make sure you check that and put to everyone when you're sending it that just means everyone can see your questions um and everyone can see the comments and it's good to get that discussion going as we're as we're going through this um and yeah, just feel free to pop in. Um, we've already got a few messages in there. So yeah, morning for, to everyone. And uh, yeah, then it will be recorded. So yeah, if, don't, don't stress about that. That'll be sent out um, after the webinar. And then um, yeah, feel free to reach out directly to us as well um, through that um, at any point. And I'll, I'll be sort of managing the questions as they, as they come through and, and throwing them to Kurt. And then we'll have, a, like I said, a big session at the, at the end. Um, from my side, I'm going to be talking um, about how to use build exact to manage your markup and margin so kurt's going to go through in his presentation um, pricing for profit and how you need to be um structuring uh, your quoting and your finances side of the business and that's going to flow really well into how we do that through build exact i'm not going to take you through a full demo of the software a few of you have been on there and seen this before already and some of your customers so that's that's great you don't need to sit through the whole thing um but if you do want a demo of the software you can always feel free to, to reach out um, so I'll throw to Kurt, he's got his screen uh, showing now. I'll mute myself and you don't need to look at me anymore for, for a little while and uh, um, over to you, Kurt. Thank you, Julian. We'll see you a little later on. I just want to shout out a big thank you to you, uh, Julian uh, and Marina and Build Exact for hosting this webinar and also to you guys attending live. We've got a lot of people on here today and I know exactly how valuable your time is. So I'm going to make sure that we optimize this time together. And I can tell you now, this is this information I want to share is so important, man. Like it is just unbelievably important. And it can literally uh, determine the success of your career, the rest of your career, if you just pay attention. And um, I'll just, I'll, I want to let you know very clearly what it is I'm going to be talking about today. So it's, as the, the heading says, we're going to be talking about pricing for profit. Okay. So specifically what you can do to ensure that you price your jobs and make a net profit, okay? We're gonna be talking about gross margin as well. And there is a difference between gross margin and net profit, but I can tell you unequivocally, regardless of the stage that you're at in your business, whether you're just starting out, you're a young bloke, or you, you know, midway through your career or at the end, I can tell you now, there'll be something in this presentation which is relevant to you and potentially life-changing. And I can say that because in the 16 years, since 2004 that I've been coaching builders, I'm yet to come across someone who's got all of the stuff in place, all right? So there's, there's got to be something that you're not doing. And if you, a seasoned, um, you know, businessman, you, no doubt some of you guys have had business coaching, you've attended workshops and seminars. So, you know, hopefully you've already got some systems and structures in place to ensure that you're achieving a, a relative level of success. There will be something, there'll be a little critical distinction that can really serve as a game changer, potentially, you know, small hinges swing big doors. So, that's what I'm hoping to deliver. That's what I'm working very hard today to deliver for you guys is that 
And one or two critical distinctions are going to make all the difference for your business and just set you off on the right trajectory. So let me just run through. I'm just going to rapid fire through a list of exactly what we're going to cover off. So how to consistently price at the right gross margin to ensure you make a net profit. And again, there is a difference between gross margin and your net profit or margin. So we'll be talking about that and, and why gross margin is so important. There are two important reasons why you want to have an accurate gross margin. Sadly, most guys don't. The simplest, most effective way to price your jobs. There's different ways to price jobs. I'm going to talk about the simplest and the most effective way to ensure that you, you, you're going into a job pricing it correctly and you know exactly what that margin is. And then the game is holding that margin on delivery, obviously uh, ensuring you don't have any overruns and then seeing if you've got it at the end. The minimum volume of work you need. So some of you may have great margins. In fact, people come to me and go, my margins are great, but the volume's too low. If you, if you turn it over less than two and a half mil, guys, you're not going to make any meaningful net profit. You do need a certain volume of work. There's a correlation between volume and margin. So two and a half mil straight off the bat, I can tell you right now, or monthly, you should be invoicing about 200 grand a month. If you're invoicing way below that, then you've, your step number one is to get the volume up as well as the margin. And then financial control. So I spoke about pricing consistently well and accurately at the front end, holding the margin at the end, you want to check. Well, you need financial controls. You need a, a basic reporting system that shows you like an individual profit and loss on a job to see whether you achieved that margin, were able to hold the margin that you, you had at the front end. And then the best way to stack cash. This is the single most, most powerful and important thing I've learned about wealth creation. It's about stacking cash. We're going to look at that. I'll give you an example as well. And then I'm going to share the margins that my private clients use. So I've been coaching builders one-on-one, -on -one, like I said, since 2004. That's what I do. And by the way, if any of you, as you listen to this presentation, whether you're on the live call or listening to the recording, if you go, hey, you know, does this guy work with builders? How do I get in touch? Because I've had people ask me that. I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching services. You can um, email info at builderscoach.com.au and happy to book in a 30-minute FaceTime or Skype session to establish if and how I can help you, okay? So just a, a heads up there. And um, look, the, the way I'm going to go about the session, again, we've got limited time together, right? I want to make sure you, this is life-changing for you. That's how, that's how I know that I've, I've won and uh, I like to win. So the way I'm going to go about it is I want to ask questions. I'm just going to ask you, like, do you, um, well, here's, here's the first question right now. How much certainty and control do you have over your financials right now? Okay. So that's a rhetorical question. You don't have to type in the chat box, but just ask yourself that, right? How much certainty and control do you have over your financials right now? When I say financials, your, your profitability, your pricing, going in at a consistent margin, your financial controls, your cash flow forecasting, do you have a lot of certainty and control? Okay. Now I'm going to ask more questions like that. And if they make you uncomfortable, if the answer makes you uncomfortable, good. That's an indication that something needs to change. All right. So I'm here to, to one, make you uncomfortable, to realize where you need to make changes. And then more importantly, to give you specific tools and resources so you can fix those things. So you can close those gaps so that you don't become a statistic. And sadly, you know, that there's a recent article, I don't know if you guys subscribe to Urban, uh, the, the Urban Developer online newsletter. It's a great, it's a great newsletter, relatively new. It's only a couple of years old, but it's getting more and more traction. But they had a, an article with very credible sources talking about a $360 billion house of cards that's coming where in the building industry, obviously it's really busy now, right? Like the real estate market's going nuts. We haven't seen anything like this since 1989. Uh, there's, you know, you guys are obviously all busy, but with that happening, a lot of builders, because their margins are too low, are going to crash. Again, this article talks about that, the house of cards, where it's very counterintuitive. In most industries, if you're busy, if more people are throwing money at you, you make more money. But in this industry, guys get busier. And then with a few, you know, issues, hiccups with deliveries, overruns, struggling to find people, and then bang, they crash and burn. So they're predicting a lot of casualties, which is why I'm so passionate about sharing this information and why we're talking specifically about pricing, because this is going to be the number one way for you to ensure that you get through this period, not only get through it, but, but benefit from it, right? So my private clients, and they mentioned this in this article, that the guys that do have some business savvy, the guys that do have some business systems and processes are going to put their margins up, they're going to make more money, or they'll just close their books. And that's exactly what our clients are doing, right? They're going into... The, what we call a seven-figure club, all right? 
So that's netting a million bucks before tax within a 12 month period after paying all expenses, including wages. So we'll touch on the specifics of that a little bit later as well. But really, I want to make sure that you guys get this information down and 90% of the builders I help, I don't work with. Okay, so I'm going to give a lot of this information away for free. I'm a big believer in and my mission is uh, to raise industry standards. So I'm, the way to do that is through education. So I'm sharing this information freely. It's up to you to take it and run with it, to implement it, okay? Because you can understand something, but it's not about the understanding of concepts. It's about the implementation. So you've got to, you've got to one, recognize what it is, and then two, implement, all right? So let's have a look what else I can ask you before we keep moving forward. Um, yeah, hopefully you've got a plan for improving or optimizing your business profit and your cash flow. And if you don't, the question is why? Okay, so do you have a plan for optimizing or even just improving your business profit and cash flow? And if not, why? Okay. For those of you that don't know me, so Julian and I have been coaching for uh, you know 16 years now. My claim to fame, without giving you my whole backstory, late 2018, I released this book. This is my second book. The first was in 2009, and I was fortunate enough for this to be an international bestseller. So we had it reviewed by the National Home Builders Association in the US, they bought a batch and they had it on display at the International Builders Show about 18 months ago. So just emphasizing that the content that I share with you has been tested. Okay, it's not that I'm a genius, it's just I've been doing this for a long time. And this has been tested by literally over a thousand builders, right? This book is going to be the resource for this webinar. I've only got another, what is it, 40 minutes, if that, to share as much as I can with you and in order for you to get a deeper understanding of the concepts that I touch on, I want you to go to this book and I'm going to give you a free copy of the book. At the end of this webinar, you'll get an email with a link to a audio version of the book. So this book's available on Amazon, Amazon um, Australia. Uh, you'll see it .com as well. Just, just go to Amazon. You'll see it there. And it's on Audible as well. Because I know a lot of you guys are busy. I, for one, don't read books anymore. I listen to audio books, right? So you can grab that. But more importantly, there's a resources section in the book, all right? So there's 40 documents and these videos in there as well that you can use, including a total, a, a complete business development checklist. There's a 742 quality assurance checklist, all right? There's a recruitment process in there that's probably worth 60 grand over your career. It's the same recruitment process that recruitment agencies use. So all of that is in there. You guys can tap straight into it, okay? Obviously, today, though, we're focusing on pricing, and there's also a lot of documents in there that I'll be pointing to that you, that you can access. Chapter two of the book is all about pricing for profit and explains in a lot, a lot more detail than what we're going to go into today about the difference between markup and margin, uh, what the margins, what your margin should look like, what an average margin is, what my private client's margins are at. And uh, bear in mind, I'm working with builders all over and have worked builders all over Australia and New Zealand. All right. So it's great for you to, to use this information as a yardstick. Okay. And, and just know that 80 or 90%, between 80 and 90% of builders out there are not interested in business development. So the fact that you're even turning up for this call puts you in a unique category of people who understand that in order for you to run a successful business, it's going to require more than you just knowing how to build, right? There's another whole apprenticeship, which is the business apprenticeship, which is what I'm sharing with you uh, through this book. And then today as it relates to pricing. Okay. So if you want to go deeper, because I know, you know some of you are going to have other challenges right now. You've got an opportunity to grow. You're thinking, you know, how do I put on more people? Who do I employ next? Um, how do I cost that in? Okay, so I'm not going to have a chance to answer all those questions right now, but you can get them in the book. So at the end of the day, in order for you to be successful, okay, and, and my job today, again, is to, is to just simplify things, to dump things down. Sadly, there's a lot of industries that complicate for profit, you know, legal, accountants, often not all of them, and then IT, they sort of complicate and the less we know, the, the happier they are because the more they can invoice us. My job is the exact opposite. It's to make it simple. So quite simply, you're either on a trajectory where you can see the green curve, a best case trajectory where you are implementing systems and processes in your business and working on your business. Hopefully you guys have all heard that term or that you're familiar with the difference between working on versus in your business, right? In it, you're just getting work, doing work. You're on site, in the office, quoting jobs, doing them. On your business, you're putting systems in place, right? So you're either on a track where you're implementing systems and working on your business consistently well 
and heading towards hopefully best practice, a best case scenario. So we call it best practice. All we share is, is best practice systems and processes. So the best possible way to do things right now. And I can tell you now, it keeps changing. It keeps evolving and changing. If you're not working on your business at all, and you're just working in it, you're going to be heading down on a, on a bad case or worst case scenario. If you think, oh, you're just treading water, that's, that doesn't happen. That, that straight line that you can see there, that doesn't exist because of a concept called entropy. Everything is always decaying and deteriorating. It's the same as your health and your relationships. If you don't work on them, they're, they're going to get worse. So things are either getting better or worse. So my question is, what's, you know, what track are you on? Are you going towards best practice or you're heading south on that red line? And it's all about decision-making, guys. At the end of the day, you've got to make a decision, ideally with conviction, to work on your business and to do it consistently well. So if that's all I can do for you today, some of you guys may be here, you're brand new to business, you're going, you know, this is, you know, what's this all about? It's a lifelong journey, but it starts with a decision. So hopefully, if you haven't made that already, you make that decision today and get on that track because it's going to, it's going to change your business and it's going to change your life. Because when you've got a business where you're in control and you're making money and you've got a great, you've got great systems and a great team, there's very few things more exciting. And it lends itself to a lot of uh, you know, passion and purpose. And, and uh, what it does is give you more lifestyle choice. Okay? So that spills over into your personal life as well. All right. So make a decision if you haven't already. The clients that I work with, a lot of them are on the... You know, they are fast tracking that their progress towards a seven figure club. So, you would have noticed the name of my book is Million Dollar Builder. It may sound a bit wanky to some of you. The title was born out of the fact that we've got about 40 guys that are in that seven figure club. So, turning over less than $10 million in a calendar or 12 month period, right? And netting a million bucks, seven figures after they paid themselves a wage and everyone else. All right. But it's before tax. And let me just tell you, most businesses in this country and across the world, small businesses don't make a profit. So when you do, you've got to be very mindful that the tax man is going to come after you. The fortunate thing in the building industry, if you're making a significant net profit, you can take that and then and offset it by structuring things so that you're doing, you set up a development on, you go buy property and you do developments, which a lot of our guys do. And that puts them in a, you know, a financially independent position relatively quickly so i know most guys pretty much everyone i work with either does or wants to do their own developments and i always say to guys i'm gonna give you a tax problem and that's the best way to offset it so what track are you on that's the big question doing nothing is a decision or choosing to do nothing is a decision in and of itself so i would highly recommend right i know it's been a tough year for for everyone everyone's like ah uh, you know it's just um it depends where you are you queenslanders yeah you've had it easier then New South Wales and Vic, and I know the Kiwis have had a tough time as well. It doesn't matter what your situation is, right? I'm going to recommend that you dig deep, right, and push hard into the into the Christmas break, right? I would put in, and this is what I'm doing with my proper clients, right, is have a 12-week plan, regardless of where you're at. If you've got good systems in place, get a plan in place to eliminate inefficiencies, to optimize your performance. If you've got no systems in place, Get a solid plan in place to get the foundation systems, the fundamental systems in place in your business. And if, you, if you're thinking, well, what are those? In my book resources section, there's a 90-day plan that's all written out for you. It's in a spreadsheet and it's week by week and it's got all the foundation systems you need to have in place. We follow a process or a principle called the 80-20 principle. You may have heard of it, Pareto principle. Basically states that 20% of the things you do are responsible for 80% of your results. So in business, your results are profit, workflow, and cash flow, right? So there's 20% of the things you do, you and your team do every day that heavily impact on those outcomes. So we look at those and we systemize those first and foremost. So with that in mind, you can, you can implement a lot of that in the 12-week period, all right? So my challenge to you is lay that track, get stuck in. And then on the, on the break, on the Christmas break, when you're having a cold beer on, on the 25th, you're going to look back and you, you'll have that first three months, of, ideally, of 2022 mapped out as well. And you, you're going to feel great because you know you're going to be setting yourself up to take full advantage. All right? And you don't want to be on the flip side where you're on the break and then you're going, oh, what are we doing next year? We've got a tsunami of work coming, but we need more people. Should we employ someone? What scheduling tool we're going to use? That's a nightmare, all right? Get, get your things to get, your, your, uh, get yourself sorted out now ahead of the curve. All right, so let's look at the other parts of the business um by way of this what we call profit wheel right so there's 
10 different areas, regardless of whether you're a sole trader or you've got, you know, 50 it's carpenters working for you, you're going to need to have a strategy. And again, choosing not to have a strategy or direction, strategy is your direction you take in the business, and then your strategy for your marketing, for capital, for, for building up working capital, it's crucial, for sales, for improving your conversion rate, right? For your job delivery, for your administration, for your finance. So again, you know, what is your plan? What is your strategy for optimizing your profit and your cash flow? Do you have one? If not, why not? And your financial controls for improving your financial controls. And I can tell you right now, guys, the quickest way to set these things up is through other people. Okay. So you've got your systems, which is relevant to every other part, but team, your team, which includes not only your subbies on site and people in the office, but also your web developer, your bookkeeper, your accountant, your lawyer, your business coach, people who can help you set things up quickly and well. So well-being best practice, right? Without you having to figure it all out for yourself. There's never been a better time to be in business, guys. I can tell you now, like one of the best things I did was not look at the media um, about a year ago. I just stopped, all right? And I've met other people out there that don't look at the news at all on, on their phone, feed, the radio, TV, nothing at all, Okay. And you, I'll speak to enough people where I can find out any any significant news without having to get sucked in to that cesspool, all right? So the number one leverage point for you is through other people. Uh, I just want to make that crystal clear. You can accelerate your results. Even if you're a standing start, right? If you're a standing start, as in you started your business today, I can pretty much guarantee you in three years at a walk, at a walk, you can get into that seven-figure club if you want to, okay? But it, it requires you to step up. It requires you to lead and to, to seek out the best people and systems and to, and to make decisions. The hallmark of leadership is decision-making. So hopefully we can get you to do that today. So again, 80-20 rule is 20% of the systems and processes for each of these 10 areas. That'll get your business humming or at least heading on the right track so that you're making a profit, right? So let's go through some questions. I want to find out, and again, Julian mentioned, like if you've, if you've got questions, which I highly recommend you put in the chat box, um, I will answer, we will address those later. But I do want to know from you guys, what is your biggest challenge right now? I've got a fair idea of what the generic challenges are, but really this webinar is all about you. I want you to feel like you've got specific solutions for your challenges. So if you could please type in, I want you to type in now to make sure that you guys are there. I can see the numbers in the chat box. What is your what is your biggest challenge right now for your business? Okay, please type that in. I'm not going to go through it now, but I want you to do that. Um, and the key thing, guys, when it comes to, to sorting out whatever your challenge is, eliminating whatever inefficiency you're dealing with right now, the number one way to do it or the smart way, right? You've all heard of that term, working smarter and not harder. The way to do that is to, again, spend time looking for the right people, all right? Who are the right people that you can access who can help you quickly implement a best practice solution, all right? So here's a couple more questions while you guys are typing that in. And again, if you listen to the recording, you can pause this, right? And then ask these questions to yourself and, and jot them down. And again, if it, if it makes you uncomfortable, good. All right, so do you have a five-year plan for your business? Do you have a five-year plan for your business? If not, why? Do you have an exit strategy for your business? What's your, when I say exit strategy, are you looking, do you have a succession plan for those of you towards the back end of your career? Are you going to pass it on to a family member or someone else? Are you going to sell the business? Are you going to scale the business? You could say, if you want to complete your operations manual, if you've got you know, everything running like a well-oiled machine for all of these, these 10 areas, you can take that and license it and, and sell it to people like a piece of real estate where they pay money up front plus a percentage of turnover. And you can do that as many times as you want, all right? What is your marketing plan? Do you have a marketing plan? Now, some of you might be going, well, that's absurd. I don't need one. I'm so busy. But you're thinking short-term. Most guys are hunters, not farmers. They're just thinking short-term, hunt, catch, kill a job, you know, eat it and then do it again and keep moving on that cycle. The most successful people have long-term perspective. They have a farming mentality where they'd be marketing now. The number one marketing strategy is networking through architects, setting up relationships now in the, the lead into the break so that they could find guys who are happy to send them referrals 
their clients with instructions to pay for a quote, which is a different conversation. I hope we'll get to touch on that. And, and really sowing the seeds to ensure that 2022 and beyond is, is going to be the most successful year ever. So really, if you do your marketing well, if you set up good marketing systems and follow what we call education-based marketing, where you showcase your work through intelligent education-based video uh, content and, and photos, then what you'll do is you'll create a huge following and you'll have a waiting list of people wanting to work with you. Okay, that's that's the blue ocean strategy that we take our private clients to. So what is your game plan there? Do you have a game plan for your marketing and how to set that up so that you've got 100 people wanting to build with you, but you can pick the best 10 and stagger them perfectly. Okay, that's the optimum proactivity situation for your business is when you pick and choose the jobs based on geographical location, the type of job. The, um, you know, the type of client and their personality and the margin and then when those jobs start, okay? So you've got to overbook the flight, but then also have a process for politely referring on, all right? And this stuff, guys, it is not that complicated. You can just swap and deploy. If I showed you this, you could just take it, use it, and then follow the process and the results take care of themselves, okay? What is your process, for building up working capital and retained earnings. I'm going to show you a very simple process in a second that works like a bomb. It's been phenomenal for myself personally and all of my private clients. And it's the number one thing I talk to my private clients about when they come on board, when I onboard them. What is your process for sales? All right, do you have, are you charging for quotes? Let's just ask that question. If you're not, you know, it's, it's now, that was my, the one thing that I did for the industry um, and I asked myself, what is the one thing that I could do to, to really have an impact on the building industry? And that has been the one thing. And it is now, if you look out there, when I say look out there on sites like realestate.com, domain, um, through the associations, it's almost, it's almost, and in some areas is common practice now for builders to charge for a quote. And people understand the benefit to them, which is all about getting accuracy of the numbers, right? If your numbers aren't accurate, the people are getting told it's a $500,000 quote and it comes in and then during the build they find out it's 750 no wonder there's no trust i saw the stats recently where you get that list of industries and the, and the trust the level of trust in the industries and you get at the top is like pharmacists and um, nurses they're right up there and then it goes down down politicians are above builders guys you're right there i think lawyers are freaking uh, maybe not lawyers but it is bad man out of 23 industries you're down at the bottom because and i can tell you now it's because of the pricing the price is not accurate and people are getting stung left, right and center. I know people personally that will never, ever build again. You could be an, a multinational award-winning builder and offer to build for my friend for free and he'll say, no thanks. He doesn't want to do it ever again. You probably know some people like that, right? That's how bad it is. All right, so what are you doing to raise standards? And if you're going to do one thing, charge for quotes, package it up as a cost analysis and help people get accuracy with their numbers, right? You would do that for a family member, do it for your clients. And then what is your process? Again, we don't have, we have time. We want to get into the dive into the financials, but what, what's your process for improving your administration? Guys, you can go paperless. I'm running a webinar soon on how to go paperless. We did this years ago. You could run your entire business paperless, right? What What's your your process for not only, you know, not necessarily going paperless, maybe you don't want to go there, but just having like well-organized administration paper flow going through the office, your finance. Uh, your systems as a whole for your team, for your leadership. You should be improving yourself and your leadership all the time, right? If you don't, guys, you're going to get left behind because why? Well, you know, information age has never been better sharing of information. And I'm seeing young guys. I interviewed a 29-year-old builder in Sydney on Friday. He's one of my private clients on my private client webinar who came up against an older builder. So for you young blokes in your 20s, no doubt there's a few listening, right? You, I often hear from you, and maybe you'll find this to be true for yourself. Yeah, oh, it's really hard to, to compete against the silver fox, right? He's been building, especially if you're building luxury custom homes in the area. The, the, you know, the older guy in, in his late 40s, early 50s has been, has been building for 25 years. And he's got a massive portfolio and he's won national awards, right? How are you going to compete against that if you're 27 years old or you're 29 years old? Well, this guy did. And the woman that he met with, she said to him, I met with one of the best, if not the best builder in Sydney, right? So I've got an idea of who it is, but he's old school, right? Most of what he does is in his head. This young bloke had structure, systems, proactive communication. 
This woman worked for a major corporate company that you'd all know of. And she says, I love process. I love structure. I love the, the proactive communication. And he's, he's getting the job, not the other guy. Okay. So, and for you older blokes listening, I don't want to hammer the older guys, but you, I bet you you've seen some young guys come flying, flying past you because they're adopting these best practice systems and technology and they're getting off to a flop, you know, head start in their careers. And going way past guys have been in the industry for 20, 30 years. All right. So that's the that's the overview. So let's get into the financials. And let's start with a question around, um, you know, how it makes you feel. How do your financial systems, your profit or lack of, um, you know, hopefully there's some guys in the other that are making a profit and ready in that seven-figure club. And for you guys, it's about optimizing, right? But how do your financial systems, when, when I talk about profit and cash flow and BAS and ATO and balance sheet, how does that make you feel? Is that my sort of my, sort of my copy? <laughs> Let that sink in. How does it make you feel? Like, be honest with yourself here, right? And I'll, and I'll know the answer for most of you, okay, without even checking the, checking the chat box, that it's anxiety. A lot of people feel anxiety around their financials, all right? Around provisional tax and profit, and it's all like a haze. And if that's the, the truth for you, it doesn't have to be that way. Sadly, a lot of guys just assume, well, this is the way it is. And that you get accustomed. Some of you may have been living with anxiety and fear around your around money for 20 years and just assume that that's normal. It's not normal, okay? That is not normal. It doesn't need to be that way. What's happening is, and this is not your fault, you weren't taught the fundamentals of pricing, of having accurate financial controls, like an accurate profit and loss. I'm going to go through that today. The way you should feel when you think about your financials, your profit and loss and your bank account and everything else is how you did when you were a kid on Christmas morning or on your birthday, right? whatever your religious affiliation, that feeling you had when you were a kid and you got whatever you wanted, if it was the, the new bike or skateboard, if you could imagine bottling that feeling, right? that is how you should feel when you look at your financials, when you meet with your accountant. All right? And that is how people feel when they hit that seven-figure club or when they can see that seven-figure club in their projections when that, they know it's coming. right? So Again, it's very exciting and, and you can get there too. And it's not that complicated, right? It's quite, it's quite simple to get there, okay? So let's talk about stacking cash. I've just got a message coming through yet. So I'm make sure we uh, all systems go. I did tell Julian to text me. Um, okay, cool. Let's go. Um, Profit First. Guys, there's a book called Profit First by this guy, Mark Millowitz. And um, I want to show you an, a real example of how this works. It's basically most people go income minus expenses equals profit. And they take the profit and then try and invest that to generate residual income. With profit first, it's income minus profit equals expenses. Okay, Robert Kiyosaki, um, Grant Cardone, Dan Pena, those guys will follow the same principle. I explained it to a guy at one of my events when we were doing live events a couple of years ago. 12 months later, he came back to another event. It was in Melbourne and he said to me, he, he was, Kurt, I want to show you something. And he pulled out his phone. He had 69 grand. He's putting 1,250 bucks a week away. Okay. So I'd highly recommend you do it, do the same. When I say put it away, direct everything out of his account. And 12 months later, that was the total. 12 months after that, as we went into this COVID situation, he contacted me again and he was up to 133. And then in April this year, he contacted me again and then you see a whopping 328. So this is someone who couldn't save, all right? The same thing happened for me. The same thing happens to all my clients. So set up a direct debit today of, you know, whether it's 50 bucks a week or 500 or 1200, like this guy, Jim, just do it, all right? I can't tell you enough. And there's, I'm not going to tell you how to invest your money, but there are apps like uh, Spaceship and Spaceship and Sharesies are Kiwi products. And then there's Ray's which is acorns. It's a, and, and just Google reviews on this guys. You'll see this three, 300, 500,000 Aussies on, on Ray's and Kiwis as well. And then Comsec pockets got one Westpac bank. And then there's, there's the crypto thing, which I would recommend you do, but again, don't, uh, I don't want to give you financial advice, but at least get a little bit, even if it's 50 bucks a week on um, Ethereum and Bitcoin. All right. So guys, if you don't do any of this, that's fine. Um, what you need to do, though, is have at least 2% of whatever money comes in. So every 2% of every progress payment should go into a separate cash account. All right. So you can literally, as a progress payment comes in, take 2%, put it in a separate account so it's not linked to your current trading accounts. And um, you want, if you want to know where I got that number from, 
It's from the, the Home Building Compensation Fund guidelines, right? Where they did research, these guys did research on the number of builders that go under and then why. So they looked at, went through the rubble of all the builders that go under and then why. And the number one reason was low margin, which is why we're talking about that now and also trying to offset the, the risk to you moving forward. But in that list of things, down the bottom there, you can see, and I'll just enlarge it for you, is capital and retained earnings. And by the way, they look at these things when they do your home warranty insurance, right? The strength of your financials to give you the insurance to increase the volume of work you do. And you can see capital retained earnings over 2% put you in the low risk category. So they, you can see there's low risk, medium risk, high risk. The lower your margin, if your margin's below 12%, you're high risk, high risk to your client, okay? Medium risk is 12 to 19, above 20 margin. And again, there's a difference between markup and margin, which we'll talk about. You're in the low risk category. All right, so moving along. So what is your strategy Again, for optimizing your cash flow and profit. If you don't have one, make a decision to start working on your business right now. So let's look at that difference between markup and margin. And you can see in those home building compensation fund guidelines, that 20% margin put you in, just put you into the beginning of the safe zone. So that's a 25 mark up. So the markup is what the percentage you put on once you've calculated the costing. So if you do a real simple example, if your uh, the costings on a job materials and labor and including your time for supervision and project management if that comes to say a hundred thousand bucks and we mark up 25 percent so nice easy numbers that's 25 grand 25 grand goes on top of the hundred costings the total figure is 125 that's what your client pays when we work out the the profit on that it's simple it's 25 grand that's gross profit now you still need to pay your overheads from that so we haven't included any overheads in your costings, right? And the reason we haven't is because we know that your overheads will only ever be between eight and 12%. So for those of you that are listening to recording, or even if, you, if you're on the live call, write this down. I want you to check this, check your overheads. Now make sure when you check your overheads that you don't include any site related costs like supervision, project management, any of your apprentices, labor, any of that. Okay, that is cost of sale, like your bricks, steel, timber, subbies. Okay, a cost of sale is a cost you incur after signing the contract. All right, so this is in line with the simple process for pricing. Trying to include your overheads is just too difficult, right? It's going to require, if you're going to put a percentage in or something, whatever you, um, you might be trying to do, it's going to require that your turnover remains the same every single year and your overheads remain the same it doesn't happen it's never going to happen okay so rather take overheads out we know they'll only ever be between eight and twelve percent of your turnover again check that check that but take out your site related supervision and project management out of there because most of you are going to have that in your fixed costs on your profit and loss and you shouldn't okay and again if we if we go back to the example of that 25 markup that 25 grand is the gross profit which we then use to pay overheads, which should be between eight and 12, probably in your case, it'll be closer to eight, most of you. That 25% or that 25 grand as a percentage of 125 is 20%. That's the margin. So mark up is costing up, is going up from the costings. Margin is coming back from the total. Okay. Again, chapter two of my book goes into more detail, which you, and you can see more examples of exactly how that works. My recommendation is you get a 25 margin. And that requires a 33 markup. So you got 100 uh, costings on the job, materials, labor. You put 33 on. Let's use the same example, 100,000 costs, okay? Including supervision and project management at an hourly rate, weekly allocations. That's going to require that you keep timesheets, okay? Markup 33. That 33 grand profit on as a percentage of 133 is 24.9 or 25%, Okay. Now you're doing that not to profiteer. Some of you are probably going, oh, I won't win a job. Um, yes, you probably won't win a job if you haven't differentiated. So the, there is some front end work that you need to do. You need to position yourself as a specialist. So you specialize in renovations, extensions, that'll be the most common or custom homes. And you have a portfolio. You want to be the cardiologist, not the GP. And what, once you do that, and if you've got some basic education-based content, then people will gladly pay you more. They'll trust you more. Okay, because you're a specialist, you know what you're doing. All right, so that's the difference between markup and margin. 
Highly recommend 33. You guys should all be able to achieve 33 markup or 25 margin. Now, by the way, in the Builders Coach community, that 25 is okay. You'd be like an average student if you had a 25 margin, okay? Most of you are going to be between 10 and 15. I know that because just having to spend this much time in the industry. And here's the thing, right? This is the thing that really blows my mind. Most guys are looking at, at what most guys are doing. So most people... And this, this is relevant to every freaking industry. I want to try and not use expletives yet. Keep it PG, right? But people people look at what every, most people are doing. But most guys are charging 10 and 15%. Okay. Yes, most guys, 80, 80, 90% are doing that. And guess what? They're going off a cliff. 80, 90% are going to go off a cliff. So if you want to achieve best practice, you want to achieve peak performance, you're going to be in the 10%, 3%, 1%. Okay, you're not going to be doing what 80% of the morons are doing that are going off a cliff. And I, and I say that, okay, because a lot of intelligent people do that. Highly intelligent, high IQ, university educated people look at the masses. They look at the 80%. And we've all heard the stat, 80% won't be in five years. It is, I mean, it's, it's a lot of crazy things going on in the world. So maybe it shouldn't shock everyone. But the fact that that's where people look is just beyond me. All right, guys. So that's where your margins need to be. Here's a big one, right? If you listen to nothing else, if you just do this before the Christmas break, right? Look at your jobs. Now, this is going to require that you ideally have financial controls where you can do a profit and loss on a job. So when the job finishes, you look at the costings, the job, the cost of sales, just the materials labor, including your time, and then look at what the gross profit was, and then convert that to a percentage, and then compare the profit on jobs. Ask yourself which jobs were most profitable, and then are you targeting more of that type of work? You could just do this. If you're turning over you know, more than two and a half mil, like I said, you want to be doing at least that. If you only look at targeting more profitable work and you do the same turnover next year, you're going to make a hell of a lot more money or put a hell of a lot more money on your bottom line. All right. That's, this is called chasing the margin, not the revenue. Most people don't do this again in all industries. Why? Because they don't have time. Everyone's running around so busy can't see the wood from the trees you don't stop long enough to do this but ideally do this before the break or if you can't because you're going to have a crazy leading to, to christmas do it on the break so that next year you can develop a marketing strategy to target more of the profitable work it sounds crazy man now people who are not in business and hear me saying this they like shake their heads like this is just too simple for words but this is where it's at right what's your reporting system so you don't need an overly complex financial reporting system. You need a basic profit and loss. It's important that the PL is accurate. So you've separated your cost of sales, cost on a job from your overheads. And that's going to give you your gross margin. Why is gross margin important? Well, you, it allows you to check the difference between margin on jobs, right? As well as calculate your break even point, which is crucial to know when you start making a profit. Cash flow forecast, the 12 week cash flow forecast, and a revenue projection. By the way, guys, all this information and these spreadsheets are in the resources section of my book. So if you just tap into that, you'll, Marina's going to send out a link. You can get access to all these documents. And then work in progress, yes, it'd be great to have. But do these other things first. The, the three that are highlighted in bold, do those first. Here's a very simple outline of a PL. You've got your jobs in or the income from jobs that comes in. And then you've got your cost of sales, so the cost to do those jobs, including your time or anyone else's for supervision and project management or your labor on site. And then you've got your running costs, so your fixed expenses, which is office, vehicles, petrol, marketing, that sort of thing. And again, if you look at your fixed expenses, minus the site-related labor costs, it should be anywhere between 8 and 12. I've never seen over 12%. Please contact me directly if yours are over 12. That's an indication when you you top heavy. Girls often ask me, when should I employ another supervisor or when should I employ another uh, project manager? Those are cost of sales. It doesn't matter. If you've costed them inaccurately, your client's paying for that. You don't say, when should I buy more bricks for this job? Or how do I know I can afford it? Well, it's costed in. The client's paying. When do you employ a contracts administrator or grow your, your team or get an office? That you look at your percentage, your, your costs as a your fixed cost as a percentage of turnover. And if they're at 8%, you've got room to move. If you go past 12, you know you're top heavy. All right. So flying along, here's an example of the cash flow forecast. Again, it's in the resources section of the book. 12 week cash flow forecast is the best. So you've got money in, money out, one washed up against the other. And this will tell you your net cash position. 
which is powerful. Guys, metrics. I highly recommend recommend you do this for next year. Have a turnover goal. Have a number of starts, ideally. And also, how you'd like to stagger those, the number of quotes. This is going to help you with your selection of people that come to you. What you say yes to, what you say no to. We've got guys now, they're just going through what's in the pipeline, potential quotes and culling and selecting, allowing the best ones through that best align with their metrics and, and their specific starts, start dates, that sort of thing. But ideally, you can have turnover, number of starts, that equates the number of quotes. If you're charging for quotes and using preliminary agreements, it should be a one in two, minimum one in two quote for contract. Their number of sales appointments to achieve the quotes and their number of inquiries. Well, you want to have an overflow, right? Most guys go, oh, I don't want to have 100 inquiries and do 10 jobs. But because they think you got to go, they got to go see everyone. You don't. You don't need to see everyone. The easy way to politely step away from an inquiry that's not relevant is refer them on. You just politely refer them on to someone else. And then cash reserves, the 2% minimum, there are what you need to do. But with that profit first, I'd keep building as many of those accounts as you can. So let's look at pricing for profit before we wrap up, because I'm going to have to hand over to Julian shortly in a few minutes. So you calculate your raw costings, all right, on the job, materials and labor, including supervision and project management at an hourly rate weekly allocation. So keep timesheets using a timesheet app that works. And then you mark up a minimum of 25%, which will give you a 20 margin. That gives you in the, just in the safe zone, but ideally a 33%. The beautiful thing with Build Exact is that you can do this overall on the job. So you can work out your raw costings and then you can put a percentage in overall, which is what it should be. And if you've got, if you need to know specifics about that, I'm not your guy. I'm not, a, I don't understand Build Exact well, but Julian and his team can help you with that. And I've seen them do it. I've seen them demonstrate it. It's brilliant and very, very simple and easy. Um, so here it is, just going back to the, the HBCF guidelines, right at the top, guys, right at the top, the, you low risk if your margin is above 20%. So that's where I'm getting this from. This is what we're calling empirical evidence, right? The research shows if your margin is above 20, you're low risk to your client. So you're doing them a favor, right? You're not profiteering. Some of you are probably falling off your chairs, go, but I'll never win work. You need to be there. Otherwise, you're putting yourself and your client at risk. If you crash and burn, by the way, you can do things to get money in the next day. You can get a nominee. You can become a handyman. You can put Fruit Loops on the table for your family, right? But your clients often can't do anything. They're stuck halfway through a job. No one wants to touch it. Boom. The consequences are far more severe for them. Before I hand over to you, Julian, I just want to point out that you know, getting these numbers right, getting your financial controls in place, having a pricing strategy, understanding your margins, doing it consistently well is one thing. And it's a, it's a very important foundation thing that you need to get in place because you can have all the marketing in the world, but if your margins are too low, you're just going to send yourself to an early grave, right? You're going to market yourself out the back door. So you need to have these in place first and foremost. Um, however, you then do need to, especially in these times, have a sales process. So again, there's one in the book. Otherwise, the sales process that we now use with our private clients has been upgraded. If you want that latest version, you can email me. I'm happy to send it through to you guys. No strings attached. And make sure that you're charging for quotes and have a marketing system that continues to generate a consistent flow of quality inquiries, quality inquiries. So a lot of you are getting substandard inquiries coming through. You're going out and seeing people. No doubt you're getting to site and going, oh my God, I'm never going to work with these people. Okay, so you need to have a game plan to target the type of people, the type of work that you want to do. That is your higher margin work. So it goes back to chase the margin, then the revenue. All right, guys, that is, that's it from me. Julian, if you're there, happy to hand over to you. Yeah, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, I got you loud and clear. Awesome. So thanks, Kurt. Really appreciate that. It's a lot of good information there. And um, we do have a few questions coming in, but a lot of the questions are going to be tied to kind of what I'm going to be going through. So if you don't mind, guys, I'm going to maybe just show you um, how to do some of the stuff that Kurt was talking about uh, inside Build Exact. Um, there'll be obviously some of you that will be subscribers that will be doing this. So apologies if I'm you know going through the same information. Um, but hopefully for those that that aren't using the system or maybe that are thinking about using it, it'll give you a bit of an indication of, of how the system um, can be run. So. Kurt, I might get you to stop sharing if that's all right, mate, and then I'll no worries. I'll hop on. Do this. There we go. Where's the share button gone? There we go. 
I'll just disappear into the background and um, catch you <laughs> after your presentation. No you ask me, okay, you can see my screen okay now, can you? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, awesome. All right, guys, so um, Build Exact, for those of you who don't know, and you might have just, um, you've seen a social post, something, and joined the webinar to see who we are, um, online estimating and job management system for builders and trades. So the idea of our system is that we try and help the smaller builders um, generally, so they're people that, you know, potentially are doing everything manually. So sitting there with a paper plan, scale ruler, uh, pencil, drawing up a manual Excel sheet, um, sending your quotes probably by, by, by a Word document that you're there formatting and adding pictures and bullet points and, and then downloading that and then sending in an email to a client. And then you're managing your schedule through probably a phone or through an Excel sheet or a, uh, maybe a scheduling software that you might be using. And then when it comes to ordering materials, again, it's probably all done by, by your phone or, or email. The problem that we see with that last part, especially, is that when it comes to knowing your, your, um, the markup you need to put in to get a margin out, a lot of people don't actually know what that ends up being as a, as a profit margin. So I was um, at a master builds event, um, I think it was in Newcastle um, last year, and there was an accountant presenting, and he was basically saying that people um, under, underestimate what their margin is. You know, they, 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 they think it's, sorry, overestimate what their margin is by 5%. So um, what you potentially think your margin is, what you're actually getting um, is, is quite a bit different. And, you know, obviously we're moving into times, you know, the last year or so where we've had material price, price rises, labor shortages, all that kind of stuff. Um, so if you're already estimating incorrectly from the very beginning and you're not knowing that number, you're not knowing that what that margin is going to be. And then you've got all these things that happen in between you starting that work. Um, that's going to lower your margin. So I'm going to really show you and build like how we kind of manage that process. So you guys should be able to see the software um, at the moment. So what I've effectively got here is a bunch of categories. Inside those categories is a bunch of line items. That can all be uh, templated out. You don't need to go and enter these in every single time. And you just, you know, if you're doing bathroom renos, you'd have a, a bathroom reno template. If you're doing a, a kitchen reno, you'd have a kitchen. You're doing a new build, single story, double story, et cetera. You'd, you'd basically have a template for that. Now, I'm not going to go through the full takeoff and the full everything. I'm just trying to really trying to keep this as simple as possible for you guys to get an understanding of it. If you are after a full demo of the software, please reach out to us and book a demo online. We'll, we'll have to take you through one-on-one -on, -one on how that works. So the preliminaries, I know this is $100,000 uh, there. I'm really just showing you for one line item, again, just to keep it simple. So whatever this line item is or multiple line items, what we're really trying to do here is effectively follow what Kurt has just been saying about how we manage that markup. So the way Build Exact works is that you can go and add your markup in on a line by line, this percentage button just here. You can go and add it on a category or you can add it in the job overall. So multiple ways you can do it. You might want to add different, um, different levels of markup with different items. You might want to add more on some other things. Um, I think we see people sometimes do that in variations. They add a bit more on at the end um, if there's a variation on it. So the way we work, markup, you go into here, markup uh, at 33% for 20 5% margin. You don't type all this up in. I'm just kind of showing you from here. We type in 33% and you can round up or round down if you want to. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Yeah, okay. Now that's going to add that markup to every single item I've done. Now, if you've got line items that you've got markup added on as well, it will do that first, calculate that first, and then distribute it uh, down to the full markup to the very end on top of that. So again, if you wanted to go in and add another 5% you know, on here, you could do that perfectly fine as well. So that's how the that's how that part of the system is is managed. And then in fact, you just save save what you you're writing. Um, now there's a couple of options. Here. I won't go through all of this stuff, but for those of you that are interested, there's a couple of options here in terms of how we distribute that markup. So there might be items that you want to show to the client. You want the markup on there, but you don't necessarily want to show the client that that markup is on that item. For example, there's a few options there you can do to redistribute that around. So if you've got 100 other items, it will take it and distribute it across the other 99 items, um, just so the client is still um, you know, not seeing that fully marked up price, but seeing what the actual price is. So that's how you get that information in. Now, I won't go through the whole takeoffs and everything like that, but I'm just really trying to show you how this part of the system works. Now, I've got uh, another build exact uh, job here. So it's the same thing I've just done. It's just saying we have to go through the, uh, the process of creating it. It's the only thing that I've put into this job because it's the only thing I've priced into this job. So obviously, you would normally see a bunch of other things in here. Now, what I'm really trying to show you is we've got this $100,000. I've got a purchase order that I haven't sent out. So let's just say that's been completed. Open that purchase order. We'll say it's been completed. This is where I would type in that reference number from 
the supplier or the subby for that individual item. And then I say, what well, I actually paid for it. Let's just say we budget 100,000, we're paying 100,000 for it. So nice and simple. We'll hit save and close. We'll go back into our costings. So you can see here for this line item, I've run 100% to what I estimated that. Again, it's another thing we, we see that with a lot of builders that they don't tend to know. You might know roughly what the job has done, um, but very, very rarely we see people that can tell us exactly how they're tracking on any particular item or type of items or even per trade. Um, so with this, if you had some items that went over or under budget, it will actually tell you. So on this line item, I went 100%, so perfect. I had other line items, you know, it might show 95, it might show 110, but Ultimately, what we're doing there is we're going to be able to see all these items, all these categories at the top, just here, as you can see as well. How did I track? How did I perform? Okay, well, if there's a mistake that's happening and it's continuing to happen, what do I do? I go back to my estimate, I change my template, I make sure I don't make that mistake again. So now then on the future jobs, I know that if I'm quoting at this price, bar a freak accident or something happening, I know roughly I'm going to make this, this margin. Whereas a lot of people at the moment go, yeah, I'm going to add 15%. You know, margin, so I'm adding you know 20 odd percent markup, and then I'm just going to go, okay, well, that's what I need to do. And then there's no real way of actually checking how did that perform. And if it didn't perform, where were the key areas of, of where it didn't? So let's just say that I've, I've spent the hundred grand um, there, I'm now going to invoice the client. So I know obviously you have multiple invoices in this, but again, I'm just simplifying it. So I'm just going to create an invoice as a hundred percent. So the first invoice normally is a deposit, so we'll just say deposit, save and close. Oops, sorry, let's end it. So invoice, save and close. And you can see this gross profit margin in the top right corner. For some of you guys, sometimes the, the Zoom toolbar kind of moves around in your, in your screen, so um, it should be in the top right corner. You might need to move it out. But as Kurt said there, we've got 33%. That translates to 25%. Um, so as I said, most people are not able to see this level, let alone all the other individual uh, levels inside the software, in, inside your, your, your job. Because, you know, often people will start out and they go, yep, that's what I'm going to do. I can do it all manually. I don't need a software to do it. I'll do it all manually. And then you get busy and you're, you're, at, you're at home and you, you want to see your family or your friends or whatever. If you're locked down, you're probably not doing too much else, to be honest. But um, <laughs> um, if, you're, if, if, if you're doing that in, in the evening, the last thing people want to do is go in and grab a bunch of receipts, try and key them to every single little Part, portion of the job, go and analyze all that data and then go back into an Excel sheet, download it, and then look at where they've run over and under. Um, I mean, it's physically possible. The problem is it takes forever to do that. And then people with best intentions don't end up doing it. And then they don't know the, the difference and then they don't know where their estimate is going wrong. So they just continue quoting in the same in the same same way. So as you can see 25%, that's based on a 33% um, markup. So that's really how you run it inside our system. And it just means that you're able to get better information um, during the process as you're as you're as you're building your, your, your as you as you're building the build um, and you know managing your business and being able to adjust if anything does happen. You know, right now, material prices, labor shortage, etc. Um, interesting to see what happens next year um, with that when everyone's sort of out of lockdown and potentially there might not be as many uh, of the government um, grants. But I think I spoke to that yesterday. And he thinks that. With the international um, arrival that we're all going to set to flood back in, that should stimulate it as well. So, interesting to see what happens next year. But, um, guys, again, that was really, really quick from me. I didn't want to take up too much time because I know a lot of you are using a system and, you know, probably don't need to hear me go on and on about it. Um, but as I said, it's all about knowing your numbers, setting that information at the start, making sure that's flowing right through from whatever you're quoting, whatever you're sending your client, that information is going straight, straight through into the build process. Um, and then you can always go back and check. So we see a lot of people will actually download this information, run it over the, um, and look at that data over three or four jobs and see how they've been tracking, you know, for, over a period of time, and then make decisions based on that as well. But you, you want to be in a situation where you can see this and not, not be getting a, a bunch of receipts and stuff and, and plugging that into a, an Excel sheet, you know, once a month and you're already, you know, 30 days overdue. So um, that, that's it for me. I might bring in um, Kurt. Maybe we can just go through some of these. Um, these questions I absolutely I julian i've been i've been uh, trawling through the questions some great questions there by the way so i'm keen to get um, stuck yeah. in yeah no, that's some I real might, gold yeah i might just go through the q a section first because there's a bunch in the chat but um the q a the easiest one just to, to get, get through yep. we can go through all the comments and stuff uh, um sure. from there so 
Uh, Kurt, this was from you, which came through in your, your presentations from Chris. Um, and I get, I get why he's asking it. So builders that are building houses that, you know, $1 million plus, you know, versus yeah. some of the lower, the lower affordable houses, um, do people still add that 33% markup on those jobs? Um, sorry, so say that again. You've got... Um... So for the, for the, more, the more expensive homes, are people still adding that 33% markup or is that more for the lower... No, no, de definitely at the, the higher end, man. So again, guys, anyone listening, anyone who's still here on the call, um, your margin doesn't drop with the when the price the, the 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 price of the job goes up. So a lot of guys think, oh, it's a big job, it's two million dollars, it's five million dollars. The margin needs to get smaller. No, the mar mar the highest margins I've seen, right? Just so you guys know, thirty eight margin, which is a sixty two markup. That's on a four million dollar project. Most of the builders I work with. Are uh, they they if they're starting out with renos, they aspire to do luxury custom homes. So most of them are either renovations or luxury custom home builders, and they they do they, they keep going up the big bigger bigger jobs. We've guys doing you know the, the high end 10, 15, 20 mil jobs. But um, yeah, the margin stays the same on those big jobs. Why? Well, those some of those jobs take two years to complete. So you need the margin again to the margin is a gross margin, which then needs to cover your overheads. Yeah, and I kept, just on, like, from my side as well, and, and kind of half links to, to Chris's question there, like what, when you see people sign up to the software and, and use the system, for me personally, if it was me building a house, the people mm. that do X, Y, Z, I'm going to trust them more and I'm going to pay more than someone else that potentially is offering me a lower price. And a few of those things, you know, simple things like if you've got an email address that's you know, at Hotmail or at BigPond.com, change that get a business name that is that is instantly more um more professional to a client i'm going to trust you more i'm more likely to pay you more um, if, you, if you give me a really really sharp looking quote um mm. you know quickly that those sort of things are all going to impact like that for me that price doesn't matter as much as long as, as, long as i physically got it from the bank obviously man um, there's some <laughs> you spot on it's look success in business is about adding value so the, it's about how to add value and, you know, the way to do that is for, for most of you guys, if you're doing renos and custom homes, the number one way that you can, you can differentiate, which is a key thing in marketing and stand out from the other builders so that price is no longer a, a question is if you improve the client experience, which is the proactive communication. Most guys don't even spend time going there. Even the guys that I'm working with, they just don't have the inclination or, or the, the resources, the systems yet to do that. But if you do that, it's game changer. I can tell you now, but there's, just specializing is takes you a long way towards um, eliminating that price that price conversation. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a there's a guy we work with. Um, he's a builder. Um, his name's Andrew. Works one of our partners, um, and he actually does yeah. a, an estimating course using Builders. Yeah. He uses Builders as a builder, and he yeah. works um, helping people get their license. And, and he, some of you guys may have actually know him already on this, but he says it, it gets a quote, a sort of you know a fairly basic quote out to a client with rough guidelines of a budget in about half an hour to 45 minutes he can do it using our system mm. and he sets that expectation so for me what i want from someone i'm going to someone i want to say okay well what's the process i want to okay, give me give me a rough guideline what it's going to be because i don't know if i'm looking at 500 grand or i'm looking at a mill mm. that rough guideline get me something um as quickly as possible and then we can say once i'm agreed there then i can go forward and forward and forward with it but i think a mm. lot of people spend so long in getting that information with the client they've probably also reached out two or three other builders and if your that process is slow and that client experience isn't good, then they're less likely to, to part way with with as much um, sure as much margin for yourself. So, um, sure. yeah, thanks for that question, Chris. Um, Roger, uh, how do you send out PO to other trades without client's name and address to price to keep client's information uh, confidential? So I think he's referencing purchase order. Uh, I think that sounds like one for you, Junior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with the purchase order, I'll just hop into it. You guys can still see my screen, okay? Yeah. That should be set up. So this is how the purchase order screen looks from Build Exact. Anything you, all the items that you list, you hit raise purchase order. And if you've got you know, five items that need to go to Sparky, you send all those five items to the, to the Sparky. So this, what you put in here doesn't necessarily need to be anything to do with the client. Because effectively, all you're adding in here is where you're getting it delivered to, who the contact is from the, the sub your supplier perspective, the description, the date required, any instruction. So it's just giving you a basic level of, of information to go to that sub of your supplier. So we don't actually share any, um, unless you put, if you put the client's address obviously in there, then it'll go, it's more for delivery, right? But um, if you're picking it up, you don't need to add all that information in. So you can you can add as little or as much information from that. I'm hoping I'm answering the question 
uh, Roger there for you, if, if I've understood that correctly. So let me know if I haven't. <laughs> Uh, all right, I think that's all from the Q&A, although uh, Tony in the Q&A as well, is it 30% markup and that includes uh, your margin? Um, so that's one for you, Kurt. So I think, yeah, I think what Tony's saying, yeah, 33% markup, that'll be a 25% margin. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, it, a 33 markup equates to 25 margin. Exactly right. So we go through, I've, I've made a note of uh, seven other questions that were in the chat box, a lot more comments in the chat box. Um, okay, yeah, I can, can see it that. seems like um, some people got a bit agitated <laughs> for some reason. Um, but I'll, I'll go through um, some of the questions. The I'll, I'll stop sharing now anyway, so you guys can see us full screen. Okay, cool. Yeah, so how to um, how to compete with volume builders? That was one of the questions there. Uh, you don't don't compete with volume builders if you're not a volume builder, then don't compete with them, differentiate, do something else. So People who um, who want to, if you're a custom home builder, or you you offer a unique build, whether it's a, a reno or a custom home, then the market that you'll be targeting, the people that come to you, are going to, in most cases, be repulsed by a volume builder. They're not going to want a cookie cutter home. So again, this is just a, it's about you differentiating yourself in the market and then choosing a niche that um, is going to. Is, is, is going to put you out of that, that market so you don't compete at all. And again, chase the margin, guys, not the revenue. Okay. Um, someone mentioned getting good trades. So that's a, that's a great question and, and something that we're working on with a lot of our guys. How do you get good trades? Well, it's like, how do you get good clients? You've got to understand what your clients want and you've got to be attractive to them. So you've got to add value in a way that um, that gets them to, to lean in and then want to work with you, right? So be the cardiologist, not the, the GP. So with trades, what do trades want, guys? They, they all want to get paid, right? So number one, I can tell you now unequivocally, they want to get paid and it sounds ridiculous, but a lot of them don't get paid. Uh, well, every single one of them will have not been paid by a builder at some point. Every single one of them would have been strung out and, and paid late. So pay them well, pay them on time. And second to that is, is be organized. So again, so if you want to pay them on time and you, and you want to pay them well, you're going to, it comes back to margin, right? You've got to cost them in. You've got to have your margin. So you can, you can pay potentially slightly above industry rates in your area right now. That'll get their attention and do it consistently well. And then also be organized because that, that's a, that would be second to not getting paid is, is the builders being unorganized and they just get, they get stuffed around. So work work on those two things. I love one from James. I was uh, I was laughing when he sent it earlier on. The clients uh, client clients wanting a one million dollar house with three hundred grand. Yeah, exactly. So that's you know, people with beer money, champagne taste. So again, you know, it's like if you you can't sell BMWs to a student, right? Um, they may love the car, but taking them for a test drive, you're wasting your time. So again, go fish where the fish are. You've got to position yourself, and most guys don't. Sadly, they they don't take the reins and drive their business forward in a particular direction. Their business just happens to them. Someone comes to them and says, can you do this, this uh, bill? They go, yes, they do it. And then they, they just get it. Someone else comes to them and their future gets dictated to them by the environment and the people around them. So it's no job too big to spoil. You want to, you want to make a decision, stop and make a decision to move it forward. Right. Um, there was another question there. Well, that was the one I had next, actually, the $1 million house for 300. Yeah, don't speak to those people. And this, this is all about having a sales process, guys, and qualifying people out. The sales process that you'll see uh, in the book resources, if you go there, the number one step is a questionnaire. So you don't have conversations with people before they've completed the questionnaire. You don't drive out and see someone on site before they've completed a questionnaire. And then after the questionnaire, you've spoken to them on the phone to gather more information and to further qualify them before you bother to reverse your youth out the driveway and go see them. Um, someone mentioned pricing correct and protecting margin. How do you price correct and then protect your margin? So I think the pricing correct we've covered 33 markup, guys, 25 margin. That's where it should be. If you're not, then you, you're doing something wrong. Protecting your margin is in the delivery. So the best way to do that is to program the job well. So using something like BuildExact 
to program your job. Make sure you avoid a gunshot start, sign contract today, start tomorrow. And and then um, you know, making sure that you've got the, your you've got leadership on site, but uh, you know, driving driving the uh, materials ordering, managing the trades, doing the call forwards, updating the site diary every day. We've got guys that are, they finish at three o'clock, normally 3.30, but they stop work at three o'clock. And then for that last half an hour, they update into the site diary what they've done for that day, including uploading some photos into the system. And then the client gets access to that as well. So it's one, it's accountability for the team because during the day, they're wanting to get through enough work to put up something substantial into the site diary. Plus, the client gets communication where, you know, one of our builders, he hadn't had a call from a client for weeks, and he phoned him, and the client was like, I'm loving being able to log in every day and see these things. And also, um, then there's you know, photos that you can use on your social media as part of the sales and marketing, education-based marketing, which is really powerful. Um Someone mentioned price rises. So obviously there's lots of price rises, right? One of our guys did full, uh, and this is the, again, the benefit of working on your business. Um, what it does, if you've got good systems and people, is it allows you to step back, play more of a directional role and to review and assess and to look ahead, to project forward 10 months and start eliminating efficiencies before they even occur. But this guy looked at all the price hikes four jobs he found overall in, in Queensland, in Toowoomba, where he is, it was around 10% on the builds, but timber was 156%. And so, um, yeah, and, and the way guys are doing that, you know, we've, there's obviously different rules for different states. And we had a lawyer come on to explain all of the specifics. And quite simply, it's about being proactive with the communication, letting clients know that there are going to be price hikes for obvious reasons and telling them that early on in the piece and also making sure they have the financial capacity to absorb another you know, 10 to 20%. Because if they don't, that's, that's dangerous, right? You don't want to put them or yourself in that situation. So upfront proactive communication, just be have the difficult conversation about it upfront. And that could be a way to, to cull, if you like. Now, if you've got two people there, that everything else is equal, one of them's got extra buffers and they're okay to absorb the price hikes, then do that. But obviously speak to your association lawyer to make sure what you're doing is legal as well. Um, hiring staff. So that's a big thing that's happening now. It's why I mentioned our recruitment process in the book as well. Um, the, the way that our private build clients are, are employing, like supervisors, carpenters right now, is they're placing ads on Seek, Indeed, and Gumtree, and they're buying premium ads. So I believe on Seek for a premium ad, you pay $800. So they, and that is um, nothing, you know, it's lunch money compared to what you'll pay a recruitment agency. Premium ad, we had a guy on the Gold Coast, we got clients all over the country and, and New Zealand as well, but uh, 800 bucks got him 24 inquiries for a supervisor. Obviously there's, there's a lot of interest in Queensland, also regional areas all over the place because of the demographic shift. But placing a, an ad, on those platforms, as well as through your social media and through your network and also LinkedIn. LinkedIn's another place where you can, if you buy a premium LinkedIn um, subscription, you can contact people directly. You can literally search building companies in your area and you can contact people direct without having to connect with them first. And you can just say, hey, you know, we're looking to employ. We know you, you're probably happy where you are, but if you or anyone you know is looking to move, then um, here's what you get. So you got, you got to package it up as well. Again, differentiate and make, make the working for you look like an attractive proposition. Um, yeah, there, was one, there was one there from, um, from Jason, I might just quickly touch on, it's about implementing systems to flow from first inquiry to contract. Yes. So um, Jason, if you're not using Build Exact, we, we help with that. So we manage the lead section, so you can go and enter all your leads in there, what stage they're at, what budget they've got, any documents, pictures, whatever you want to add in. From there, you can then take it when you get to that process of estimating for them you can add the estimate there you can link them to customer portal as well so i didn't go through that but there's a customer portal where you can basically invite the client in you can send photos you can communicate through them and manage that relationship even before the bills even started when you're in that kind of that quoting stage um and and kind of something i mentioned before um you know it, i think what kurt's saying is it's not necessarily saying that you can just take everything you're doing right now and just go i'm roughly doing a 10 15 margin i'm just going to go 
I'm decided tomorrow I'm doing 25% margin. I'm just going to, I'm going to change, not going to change anything. I'm just going to add a, add extra markup on there and I'm, I'm going to win this work magically and it's going to start happening. It's about adding a ton of different things in there. You know, something like what I just said there, a customer portal, those sort of things matter. And if you, if you try and take a step back and sort of say, well, the client experience that I'm offering at the moment, is that worth having, is that for them enough for them to pay that 25% margin for me to, 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 or 33% on the cost? And if, you, if you're sitting there and you're saying, well, you know, clients can't get in touch with me. When they do try and get in touch with me, I take two days to get back to them. Um, if I'm taking two, three weeks to get to them from a quoting perspective, all of that stuff will play a part. And I've said this a few times on webinars, you might have heard me say it before. Almost any business in the world, the sales line will be the nicest and the best that that business will ever be to you. You pick up the phone and call the sales team, you get a phone call straight away. It's when you need support, when you need um, help, it's when you start to see how, how, how well that business is going to treat you long term. And if you're taking two, three weeks to get back to a customer when you're trying to win their money, as a customer, I'm going to go, well, if they're taking two weeks and I can't get through to them when I'm trying to give them money, what are they going to be like when they've got my money? And if, you, if you're currently in a system like that where a client calls you and you, know, you take two, three weeks to get back and, you know, and then when you're on the job and someone, hey, I need, to, I need to call my builder and you're taking three days to get back to them or it goes to an admin person and then they, they send a, a relatively short email. I've seen it. My friend, some of my friends have, have built houses and, and um, I know for a fact that the builder that they use, I would never use because it was an absolute nightmare for them. Um, and all that stuff impacts, you know, the people talking and the and, you know, referrals and things like that for, for how much. If I, if I get a good referral from someone else, um, I'm willing, to, knowing that the communication is good, I'm willing to... Yeah, push that price up a bit. Absolutely. There's so many things you could do, but I can tell you now from my experience in this market, which is unprecedented, you can go straight to 33 markup without doing anything and you'll still win work because there's a shortage of builders. You guys are in the box seat, but obviously you want to differentiate. You do want to add value. Remember business and making money is about adding value. You add value and you make money. It's, it's quite simple. Um, but don't follow the 80% that are going to go off a cliff because there are going to be a lot of insolvencies. And some of you guys have seen it. I mean, I'm hearing it all the time. Where guys are just walking away from their businesses because it's too hard. All right? So the, the reason they're doing that is they're not making any money. Their margins are too low. So don't become a statistic, right? What um, I just want to, can we rapid fire through the rest of these, Julian? Yeah, yeah. So Andrew, uh, we talk about uh, 25 uh, with a 33% markup. Are you suggesting this is after a contingency is added? The after a contingency? I'm assuming you're meaning there, Andrew, that um, like budgeting in for contingency plans, or is that included in your, your markup? No, the contingency is a contingency. So it's if you want to put that in, that's after. Yeah, yeah. you don't want to include that in there. So the... Um, the, someone spoke about, um, you, well, you just mentioned about talking about the front end process. So from the inquiry through the contract sign. So the sales process, right? Someone else mentioned, um, and, I, and I'm, I'm smirking because he said, I asked someone um, to pay for a quote and they ran. Guys, if you're going to say to someone, I'll charge for quotes, of course they're going to run, all right? You need to package it up. You need a sales process. You need to educate your clients on why it is that you're charging for a quote, right? And the reason that you're charging is so that they get accuracy and peace of mind. People will pay money for QS and every day of the week, right? To get a breakdown in accuracy. But we all know QS is not accurate. So you collaborating with a designer and architect early on and using a quality estimator, a quality estimator to get the numbers watertight, that is a completely different story. So most people believe that all builders' quotes are accurate. That's not true. There's different ways to price. People don't understand provisional sums, PC items, cost plus, uh, square meter rate pricing versus fixed price. I don't understand that. Educate them on that. We've got documents in our sales process, which I'm sharing with you guys for free. It's funny that some people ran away early because they I wasn't talking about these things, but all that information is in the book. Like there's an abundance of best practice information, which is going to transform your business and your life. And it's right there for the taking, including all of this. You want to slow down the sales process, allow people time to absorb the information. You know, it's not, everyone's busy, right? You ask any of your friends, how are you doing? I'm busy, right? So if your client's a doctor, lawyer, teacher, whatever, they're busy. So they don't understand if they've never built before that quotes are very different. 80% of them aren't worth, worth the paper they're written on. So you need to slow it down, help them understand that. If they go ask their friends, is it true that most quotes are not worth the paper they're written on? Yes, it's on realestate.com in an article 
very credible source. They get 5 million people to their site a month talking about that, right? Then they'll realize you're charging them and you're slowing it down and you're charging lunch money, by the way, to get accuracy on the numbers because you care and you want to help them. So you've got to give people an opportunity to understand that. And I guarantee you, whoever that was that said person ran, if those people were explained correctly why you're charging, they would not have run. They would have hugged you. So we've got plenty of examples there. And I have not had a builder not be able to charge for quotes, right? Not one. I'll challenge any of you. You know, I can get you doing it within two weeks. And people thanking you for the privilege as well. Um, I'm just going to go through here. So there's, there's a lot of list of these like marketing do you, do you, have you got specific questions, Julian, or would you mind yeah, if I, I'll, I'll just I'll go, the clear, the, clear the chat ones off and then we can jump onto the Q&A one. So this is from Dave. Yeah. I think, Dave, you might have put it in the Q&A section as well. Um, so basically, he's asking about um, how to pull reports based on, in build exact, it's based on types and um, material, labor, etc. So we don't run a report that pulls directly off of those. But if you download the estimate versus actuals report um, from our system in the, in the costing screen, Download it into Excel. You can run a couple of those. You can just run some formulas in there to show you, you know, for each type. So for material type, how do we track overall for this? You, so there is a way of doing it, but like, yeah, point taken. We don't we don't have a, a specific report for um, type. It's more about the line item individually and the category that it links to that overall. Which for most people, it's linked by by trade for some some form. Um, yeah, Tony definitely definitely need coaching. Yeah, I think um, I think that only went to the host uh, on this one. Um, so I've, I've worked in sales sales roles before, NYOB, you know, a few other places. You get sales training all the time. Every year you get sales training. People come in, you get taught on it, you get tested on it, you get analyzed on it. So, you know, in, in this sort of role, you know, for you guys, it's, it's no different because you're effectively salespeople um, for trying, to, trying to sell your, your, your service to, to customers. Crucial. And, and, and systemize. You can systemize that sales process. So the, the system does the heavy lifting for you. Um, someone asked if we're going to get the recording. Absolutely. Everyone's going to get yeah. the recording sent out after this. And Tony wants to book in a one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not sure if that's with you or myself, but again, our details will go out with a recording. Um, so Andy, um, are you guys aware of a source of tech savvy TAs? I'm not, maybe I'm not understanding what TAs mean. Maybe you can explain me there or if you know, Kurt. Um, one thing that will benefit a lot of small medium builders are part-time CA to drive all these great software tools. So maybe you can just, elaborate on what TACA means. It might be really obvious and I've just completely missed it. Uh, yeah, Tim, recording fine. Uh, on the custom portal, this is Daniel, on the custom portal, can the client see the job schedule? So at the moment, there's no specific area for schedule. It's one of those weird things where sometimes people don't want to send the schedule because you get held to the individual times, but you can, you can definitely send it. There's a document section, you download the schedule from Build Exact, send it into the custom portal. Um, perfectly fine. Just don't show them the expanded ver version because you'll get people that will rock up at the site checking when the brickwork's going to be finishing. So, um, Peter, I never quite a price when you establish value. Yeah, completely agree. Uh, do you have examples of what to charge for a quote? Absolutely. Um, that's a great question, by the way. Um, so our builders, not only do they charge for quotes, the, the, the proper uh, clients that we have, but they outsource it to estimators. We've got some of the best estimators in the country. And they charge 0.25% of contract. So it's two, two and a half grand on a million dollar quote or project. And then the, the builder will put usually 500 on that or, or not even, like even if they just pass that cost on, the conversion rate goes up to 50%. So, but three grand on a million dollar job is, is around about what they charge. Well, um, we have any additional resources. So Kurt, you're going to send those out, aren't you? Man, there's a wealth of resources, guys. Like just, um, yeah, there will be a link to the book resources. There are 40 different documents and checklists and spreadsheets and some videos as well that you guys can watch. Um, so just tap into that. Again, no strings attached. Uh, but if you've got any questions, let me know. If there's anything that I've spoken about in this webinar that you'd like me to send across, I'm happy to do so. I do respond to my emails myself. So that will go out with the recording. Marina's going to send that out, right? Yeah come out after the webinar um, and then andy was trade assist trade assistant so i'm not not off the top of my head andy but um from my side because i look after all the partners i do work with people that sort of really focus on that software implementation side of things so what i might do i might just pop my email in there and if you just maybe reach out to me when you've got some time um i can maybe try and put you through to someone and they'll they'll help you with you know implementing that software and kind of using it on a daily basis um i'll hop into the q a uh section now because i know there's a 
pun in there. I don't want to leave those. Yeah, so, sure. Um, so I think we so Armin. Yeah, they've already answered Armin uh, webinar yet. Uh, yet you'll get a recording. Um, yet to anyone a book a book a one on one with Kurt. That's great. Um, Armin and Daniel, you asked about the schedule. We've covered that on the chat as well. I think so. I think that's all from the Q and A's. Is there any more in that chat? Oh, uh, the chat. Can I rapid fire through the chat? There's just some, yeah. there's some good points here. So I think it'll really help people, especially anyone watching the recording as well. So someone, Craig Baxter mentioned marketing is the main thing. So our uh, most successful clients are focusing on marketing now, which is very counterintuitive, but they're, they're creating, essentially, as you mentioned before, we all salespeople, right? And marketing is selling in advance. So you can, but you can set up and automate a lot of your marketing systems. The best building companies out there, they're really marketing companies that build houses, right? The best businesses in the world, they all understand that. So within marketing, video is one of the number one mediums. So creating quality video content and having that up on your platforms, where it's Instagram, um, house, and then on your, on your website blog as well is a great way to build an audience and then have lots of negotiated tenders. So one tender build a, uh, one build a tender process is what a lot of our guys aim for. Someone else, uh, as Kelly mentioned, using the software. Scheduling, scheduling is, is huge. A lot of our, so that if you work with myself on a coaching program, the way to get control of your business and get in that proactive position is to employ someone to run your jobs for you. So have a great supervisor that manages the trades and then does the, the programming, the scheduling, and then materials ordering. Um, and uh, yeah, you've got to obviously have a recruitment process in place to employ the right people. The best the best supervisor is often an ex-business owner, like a sole trader who hasn't been able to make it work. And there's plenty of them. A lot of guys walking away from their businesses, sourcing supplies. That's, uh, yeah, everyone, everyone's experiencing that, but it's not debilitating by any means. And we've got, again, builders all over Australia and New Zealand. Uh, what else? Um, there was one here. Um, I think it's from Molinar. I think if I'm pronouncing that uh, correctly about how he charges for, for quotes or um, saying that there's $1,500 and then if the client signs uh, within the first three months, then that money is refunded. So that's, that's a good way of doing it. So Absolutely. That's what most guys do initially is they, they say to them, look, if you come on board, we'll refund it. But it, eventually the guys stop doing that. It's just getting over the hump and making charging for quotes standard procedure. And you've got to change your mindset. You're not charging for quotes. Um, you, you're really helping them get accuracy of the numbers. So you're doing them a favor and you've got to educate them on that and then everything's fine. Cash flow. And that's a really important one. Obviously, uh, profit, which you spoke about today, cash flow, workflow are crucial. Um, the three sort of Achilles heels for the business. But the number one thing you can do for cash flow is have a positive, um, a, a front end loaded payment schedule. So it's, it's legal, but front end loaded. And the MBA national lawyer explained it this way you take the deposit. Yeah, ten percent or whatever you can. Maybe it's five percent in certain areas, and then the progress payment should cash flow the job. You cannot finance the jobs. Don't get me started on banks. Your contracts are not with the bank, so don't even engage the banks. Just just ghost them. Just have a payment schedule. We've got an example which we've been using for over ten years. Fourteen progress payments on a six hundred thousand dollar job, and there's the same for a million dollar project as well. But all the way down to whatever size. Um, there was one, Kurt, I can't remember where it was now, it's a good bit up, but someone did ask about how to find um, qualified trades. They're, look, I'm not the best person to give you the answers on this, but we do work with a group called Carpentry Australia. They're, um, they've got a pretty big social media following um, and they're qual qualified carpenters on there. So, and we had them, we had uh, James from Carpentry present uh, to Build Exact team the other day, just a, a team meeting. And, you know, I think that might be somewhere you can look for those kind of places to actually find the qualified trades that are that are backed by a group um that might help you just a bit, a bit of advice from my side no cool i haven't heard of them but yeah what again if you can if you can pay them well and if you're working on your business if you guys have even got some business systems in place and just a plan and you're going to continue improving you're putting yourself in the top 10 percent straight away and the best people want to work for the best businesses so step up lead build some structure and process into your business. The builders that I'm working with, they share what they're doing with their team at team meetings and, and people respect and admire what they're doing because that demonstrates leadership. When you work on your business and you're improving the business systems, you're demonstrating that you are the captain of the ship and you're driving things forward. You're not just letting things happen. Most of you guys are reactive, not proactive. So that's a good indication. That's a good sort of litmus test. Are you reacting 
to more things around you, putting out fires, or are you more proactive where you've got control and you're planning ahead? It tells you whether or not you've got processes. Um, Andy as well there. I think he's right in there, Andy, that he's, you're basically charging out uh, for your own salary at $90 an hour. Um, or is that just from an estimate point of view? I don't know if that's, that's what you're, you're saying. You're charging for an estimate per hour based on, on how you spend it. Or is that just a salary that you add into your job on how long you'd like to spend on the job? I'm not sure, but either, either way, off of quotes, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's perfect. You want to be charging for quotes. Yeah, you charge, if you, you charge in for a quote and then just bear in mind on the bigger jobs, people often make changes that goes on and on and on. So you can have a fixed price, two changes in there for the quote or the cost analysis. And then if they're going to make changes later, you can charge an hourly rate to continue to, to do that. But prelim agreements as well, guys, preliminary agreements where you, you know, if someone doesn't have any uh, plans or engineering, you know, obviously know designers, you know architects, you know engineers, you can package that up and outsource it and, and that sends your conversion rate through the roof as well. You get 70% of those. So again, all of that, we don't have a lot of time to go through specifics because there's a bit of detail there, but that's in, in my book as well. Um, cost 15, plus... 15, oh, sorry, go no, no, you go. No, go. I was going to say 15 to 25 hours, what we see a single story new build quote takes uh, to complete. Huh? We get it down to, people use us, get it down to about an hour to five hours, depending on the type of work you're doing. Awesome, man. And, and bear in mind, guys, if you opened a business charging for quotes, you wouldn't make any money. So it's not, you're not trying to make money. It's, it's more ensuring that you're not dealing with a tire kicker. Because once someone pays you for a quote, you, there is no chance it's a tire kicker. So you will never quote for a tire kicker again. Um, what else? Tony. Okay, great, Tony. Look forward to talking to you. Um, one from Melinda here uh, for you, Kurt. Uh, we are a trade-based business and finding it very difficult to get progress payments and deposits through on the job. Um, any thoughts? So could payments from what? The clients? From the builder? or? I think that's probably what it's through, what, what it sounds like. Yeah, it, it's... Builder, oh, build, builder. Yeah, builder selection. Find a builder. So, Sorry, what was the lady's name? Uh, Melinda. Melinda, be, be very careful who you deal with because that's going to get worse now in, the, in like next year. So what you want to do is, and the way to check whether your builder is, is proactive and, and organized and professional, yeah, do they have systems and processes? Are they working on their business? If they're not, if they're running the business out the back of their ute, I would run, run. Because people that have inefficiencies now, they're just going to get worse moving forward unless they do something about it. So um, hopefully that's, sorry to, you know, to be so blunt. <laughs> But that's pretty sadly a lot. A lot of guys are going to be in a bad position, and uh, yeah, as, as a trade business, you're going to bear the brunt of that if they're not organised, right? So, which is why talking before about trades, what they want, they want to get paid. One, <laughs> there you go, and then two, they have an organised builder, so they don't turn up, and the guy like they've got to keep coming back and change everything. Yeah, well, on the organisation piece, Kurt, it's something I didn't mention before, but the schedule system in, in Build Exact, you can actually preload notifications and reminders to go from individual tasks so if you need a message to go to a particular subby or a supplier or whoever it is even if it's through your own team as a builder um, you can have those messages go but if something changes through the job and you know something happens that you, hey i need to reorganize uh, when this uh, trade's going to pop out mm. i can just send an, in, an instant notification straight to that person that's that's impacted on it so again it's one of those things where a lot of builders will come home at the end of the day and sit there they they're thing and, and do all that admin for the end of the day and you probably you know if that happened at you know 11 12 you know 11 a.m 12 midday um you're potentially wasting five six hours of notifying and potentially that person's not going to get it until the next day so you, you're almost a day delayed from when that information reaches that person absolutely yeah it looks like that's, that's a wrap June. yeah i think that's mostly it um we've still got a ton of people on which is awesome i love i love seeing that this many people stay for the for the whole questions at the end even if they're not even asking any asking any questions i saw that yeah it's like 100 people on yeah yeah um well guys that's it from me um hopefully you uh you enjoyed uh the webinar obviously thanks uh thanks so much for kurt for, for coming on board I thank you raise a hand i don't know if... uh, okay people have raised that i don't think i can might need to if you've raised a hand you might need to actually physically ask a question in the i think it might be saying people saying thanks maybe potentially <laughs> <laughs> no that's cool hi it's been an absolute pleasure uh julian thanks again man you guys are awesome and um we'll chat soon eh? yeah definitely guys if you are interested in a trial or a um a demo of the software please please reach out um and yeah get uh 
get one of us to take you through the software. That'd be awesome. Take care, guys. Have a good weekend. Appreciate it. Cheers. See ya.